We want to welcome you to my lecture today. Of course, uh, today uh, we're basically going to continue from uh, where we stopped on Monday. On Monday, we started logistic uh, regression model. And of course, uh, today we're going to continue, you know, from where we start. So I call this logistic regression part two. Okay, so in the outline today, uh, I'm going to have a kind of recap on simple binary logistic regression. And I'm actually going to walk you through uh, how to compute hard ratio and probability. Then I'm also going to walk you through how do we evaluate uh, and how do we assess logistic regression model. Then we're also going to talk about the analysis of categorical variables. But you know what, before I get started today, uh, we like to talk about, I put an announcement um, uh, maybe like yesterday or two days ago. And in the announcement, I, I think the reason, I'm going to tell you the reason why I actually made that announcement. Because uh, as a professor, you need to be every good professor should be very sensitive of, of the environment. You know, I realized that there have been a kind of decline in performance. As you can see uh, in the result here, if you look at the average performance assignment one, you can see it's, it's keep on going down. And if you look at the exam two, look at the exam one and look at exam two, you can see a decline. And I note, I observe that students have not really been attending lectures. You know, even because I gave opportunity that students to also attend lectures online. I, 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 I observe that uh, some students, um, when they are attending lectures online, some of them used to be far away from their laptop. So an attendance of lecture is a prerequisite to good performance. And that was the reason why I actually uh, put, you know, send and make an announcement. But I want to confirm to you, of course, uh, attendance of lectures, uh, you know, what I, the provision in the syllabus is intact. There's no deviation, but I did that, uh, you know, I made an announcement just to improve uh, class attendance. I want situation whereby students attend lectures, I'm encouraging you now. I have, a, I have option. You can decide to attend lectures in person or you can do that online. Right now, students are online. All what I just want is attending lectures. And if there's any reason why you actually finding it difficult to attend lecture, you can send a message to me, I understand. Because I'm not, I'm not happy at all when I'm seeing my student performance going down. And the only thing I can say, since I've not been hearing from you, you know, I give an opportunity. I want to, I want to hear from you. If problem disclosed, is problem solved. I, want, you know, I know it's difficult right now. A lot of people are going to hell, but I would like to listen to you. Because I noticed that some of you have not even been visiting during the office hours. If my office hour is conflicting with your arrangements, send a message to me. I want to meet with you. I want to hear from you. Okay, so this is the reason why I put on that message, but I'm confirming to you now, uh, uh, you know, I did not mean the message, you know, it's, going to, it's not going to affect, uh, you know, your grade, but I just did that just to, because I know when students hear about grade, <laughs> they, will, they will have a change of mentality. I think you all understand my intention, right? That is what I have. I want students to perform. So look at that. I'm not happy with that. 
That is untrue. I'm not happy at all. Okay? Okay. Now, I want to start by, uh, you know, trying to reveal uh, logistic regression model again. You know, I told you the other time, uh, we use logistic regression model when the response variable is categorical. Okay, take a look at that. This is an example. You know, it's either whether or not a person smokes. Now, why is going to be broken down into non smoker and smoker? That's be categorized. Okay, now, what about the success of a medical treatment? I want to tell you now it's not all patients who gain from medical attention. I think you know that some, 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 some patients, they're basically going to gain from medical attention, but some don't gain from medical attention. So which means the, the success of a medical treatment, you know, it can be categorical. A student, I mean, a, a patient could survive or dies. And of course, I've given you different kind of example, like applying to medical school or applying to graduate school, it's either you are granted admission or not. Of course, subject to certain numbers of predators. Now, that is what we call the binary response. What do we mean by binary? The binary is trying to tell you we got two possible outcomes, two possible. One of them we will call at the end of the day, okay? Which is what we also call dichotomous. Okay. Now, but what if in a situation where we conduct survey and uh, you know opinion poll responses, or for instance, maybe you basically ask respondents about their perception, maybe their perception about certain legislation or a particular government policy. And you basically want to see how many of them will agree to that, or how many will be neutral, or how many will disagree. This happened a lot in in, in our, our U.S. Congress or Parliament, or you know, the legislative arm of any country in the world, where when they introduce a bill, they say that some agree to the bill, or some disagree, or some can even maintain neutrality. Now, this is no longer a binary. You know why? Because there are more than two possible nature. You got agree, neutral, disagree. Okay, and we call this ordinary response. Why is it ordinary? It is ordered. I'm going to tell you the difference between when the levels of categorical, uh, you know, a variable is ordered Agree is different from neutral. Neutral is different from disagree. If you want to look at T from weight, okay, you're going to see that uh, disagree is basically going to be rank like that should be the worst, right? So here you can have the worst, the one in the middle, and you can have the best. You know, the best is going to be agree. Now, right, this time around, this is being ordered. Do you know we can also have the levels of uh, categorical variables that are more than two, but they are not ordered. I'm going to give you an example now, okay, that are not uh, ordered, okay? For instance, uh, maybe you are talking about uh, race, okay? Maybe if the response variable is race, okay? With response variable is race, maybe you have white, uh, African-American, African American, okay, and probably you have Latino. This is more than two, but this is not ordered. Okay, we, we, we can't say this is greater than this or that is greater than no, no, no. This is unordered. So this is not ordinary. But the ordinary one is the one that is ordered. But let me tell you this we have different kind of logistic regression that we're basically going to use when we are dealing with ordinary response and when we're dealing with multinomia without order, 
which I'm still going to walk you through. Okay, I want us to quickly re, uh, re, have a recap on binary logistic regression. When you hear binary, what does that mean? That basically means two, right? Two. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through this now. Uh, I want to walk you through an example where you have a binary response, but you have a quantitative predator. Okay, now if you take a look at the uh, I told you the other time we got two forms of logistic regression model. The first one is in logit form. The one that is in logit or form is what we call log hold. Okay, when you take a look at this now, hold is pi over one minus pi. What is pi? Pi is the probability of the characteristics of interest divided by one minus that. It's like you're trying to say the probability, if you apply for student loan, if you want to talk about hard, then it means the log of the ratio of the probability that you're going to be granted the loan divided by the probability that you will not be granted. That's what we mean. That's what we mean by log hard. Now we're trying to say now, the log hold equal to beta naught plus beta one S. So which means the log hold is linearly related to the predator. That's what we mean. The log of hold is linearly related to the predator. Now, when you take a look at that, the log hold is what we call logit. Logit, that's what we mean by that. Now, when you take a look at the, uh, you know, the model at the, uh, if you take a look at this model now, the one in probability form, do you know that if you solve for pi, okay, if you solve for pi, you basically, you know, from the log, from the logit form, we can derive the probability form. That's why you do algebra. I'm going to show you now, okay, uh, if I have log pi, one minus pi equal beta naught plus beta one has, this is a logit form. I want to derive the probability form. What am I gonna do? I need to solve for pi. Now solve it for pi, log, going to the other side, I'm gonna have pi divided by one minus pi, okay? Then I'm gonna have exponential raised to the power of this. Because you know why? If one want to remove this log, it's gonna be exponential. Now I want to solve for pi now, right? So this is going to be of pi equal one minus pi, then exponential raised to the power of beta naught plus beta one s. Okay, so it's going to be pi equal to exponential raised to the power of beta naught beta one hex minus pi exponential raised to the power of beta naught of beta one hex. Okay, you're looking for pi. This guy come here. I got pi plus pi. This beta naught plus beta one hex equal exponential raised to the power of this plus beta one hex. Now here, what is that? Pi into one plus exponential raised to the power of this equal to this. Now, what is gonna happen now? In solving for this, okay, it's basically gonna be this guy divided by this guy. That's what you have there. So which means mathematically speaking, if you, we derive the probability form, okay, from the logic form. What is the meaning? What are you trying to say? You are trying to say, if you want to use a probability form, okay, that will enable you to determine what is the probability that you're going to be granted a uh, student loan or uh, given a particular predator X, X, maybe given credit history or whatever. That is X. The beta not and the beta one, of course, you've already estimated that. Okay, so that's what I mean. Now, I want to quickly walk you through an example now uh, where you're trying to look at the effect of uh, uh, height on gender. Now, let me tell you what I want to do here. If I know the height, if I've not seen you before, if I don't know whether you are a male or female, okay? If I, if I know your height, can I predict your sex? What am I trying to do? That's a classification, right? That's what I want to do now. Okay, look at that, gender. Gender is a response. Okay, height. Now, when I run that, this is what I have. 
This is the result. But let me tell you this. What do we call this result? What do we call estimates? These are log odd estimates. Log odd estimates. Okay, we call them log hard. Log hard estimates. The beta now, the beta one, they are called log odd estimates. Okay, now when we have that, okay, how can we write them? Okay, I want to write them now. What, what do you think I've done? Writing them in probability form. What do you think I did? You know, what, have I, what, what do you think I've used here? I'm, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna write uh, in probability form. Uh, in probability form, it is exponential raised to power of this, okay, plus one plus exponential raised to power of this. What do you think I've done? We just plug in the estimate. Can you see the estimate? That's what we just plug in. You see that? This is in probability form. Now, what can you use this to do? When they give you height, anybody's height, you're going to plug in to replace HC. What are you going to compute at the end of the day? You're actually going to compute the probability that is going to be a male or female. Okay? That is what, and let me tell you, that pi that you see, the one you pull up, you know, if you want to write it in a logic in a logic form, the one here, the one you pull here, maybe you are talking about male here, and automatically this is going to be a female. You can as well talk about female divided by male. That's no problem. Does that make sense? Now, if pi is very close to one, if pi is very close to one, if you're considering male as a numerator then it means there is more likely that that person is going to be a male. That's what we mean. The more, if the, if the probability, if the pi approaches one, it means there is more likely, that depends on what you put in your numerator. If you put a female here, if you put a female here, then if pi tends to one, it is more likely that the person is going to be a female. Okay, that's what we mean. Okay, now take a look at this now. So that's now, you know, why do I say proportion of females? Because what I pull here, uh, my numerator is female. That was why I said proportion of female. Whatever you put at the, at the top, okay? Whatever you put at the top is what that pi represents. Does that make sense? Okay, so that is how, but if you want to write this in a logic form, this is just what you're going to write. But I can ask you to write the modem. Log of pi, one minus pi. You're just gonna write uh, 64.1416 minus 0 0.9424 HGT. You are done. This is in logit form. Logit form, probability form. Is there anyone who need clarification? Because in exam, I can give you, I can give you a model an output, I can say, okay, write the logic form of the model or write the probability form of the model. Okay, now I, I wanna walk you through how to find the hard ratio and probability. Okay, now let me tell you this. Uh, let me for first start with the hard. What do I mean by hard? This is the hard pi over one minus pi, that is the odd. If I, if I, if you have uh, this model now in logit form, and I ask you to write, what is the odd ratio? You know what you're gonna do here? What is the odd ratio? Oh, there's a few online. Oh, can you confirm if you're seeing what I'm writing on the board? Can you confirm if you're seeing that? Okay, good job. And there's a few here too, you can see, right? Okay, good job. Now, if I ask you to generate odd here, you know what you're going to do? Well, this is a log hold. Then I'm just going to write pi, one minus pi. I'm going to take the log away. When I remove the log, the log is going to come here and become exponential. Then it's going to carry this guy here. 
You know why? This is the odd. This here is a log odd. The log, this is odd, log odd. This guy here, the probability form. I want you to pay attention to the three. Look at that. Removing the, removing the log, you're not talking about hard. But when the log goes away, it's going to come to the other side and become exponential. That is mathematical rule. Okay. And you know what? Don't forget. That is what is represent the ratio of the probability of yes to the probability of no. And let me tell you this. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about the order of yes. I want to award an extra credit now. If I'm interested in odd of no, how is it going to be? Extra credit. Now I'm considering odd of yes. That was why I wrote it. Okay, go ahead. Oh my goodness, you just switched that, we flipped that. Extra credit. Good job. Now, if I want to talk about odd of no, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna flip that. What we're interested in is what you're gonna have at the top. What you are interested in. It's what you're going to have at the top. Take a look at that. OK. Now, how do we actually? We know, I told you, hard means pi over 1 minus pi, right? Now, how can we, uh, what of if, because in, if you check the textbook, as a, a, a assignment, you know, assignment that is coming, if you are given probability, you know, pi is probability, right? They can ask you to determine how. This is the formula to do that. You know, pi is probability. And they ask you to find how. You just plug in your probability here. You're going to get how. What of in a situation where you are giving how, but they ask you to figure out how probability. This is the formula you're going to use. You see, pi equal to how over 1 plus how. When you are giving how value, and they say, Calculate probability, that is a formula. When you are giving probability and they ask you to find hard, this is a formula. You know, I told you on Monday, there's a difference between hard and probability. When you're talking about hard, you're talking about the ratio of occurrence to non-occurrence. That's what we mean by hard. When you're talking about probability, you're talking about the ratio of occurrence to whole, to totality. Does that make sense? The two of them are not the same. Okay, so I think I demonstrated here. I gave an example. When the probability is half, oh, I apply for student loan and it is 50-50, what do you think the hard is going to be? The hard that you're going to be giving against you are not going to be giving with the one-to-one. -one. That is what it means. You can try that, you know? If you put 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0.5, that would be 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, that would be 1. When all equal to 1, it means it is dicey. It could go either way. That's what it means. OK. Now, I think uh, I have demonstrated that now. OK, now let me quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm revisiting this again. This is in logit form. Okay, so that is a logic form. And this is what, what I'm telling you now is odds. Look at that, what I did here. I want to get her from here. I'm going to remove the log. When I remove the log, the log is going to go to the other side and become exponential. That's what you see. You see that now? Hard equal to that. This is the same thing as odd without log. Exponential, we go to the other side and carry the other more, you know, the beta on plus the beta one S. Okay, now I basically want to do this now. You know, in simple linear regression, how do we interpret the beta one? We don't normally say for every unit increase. What is the meaning of every unit increase when it increases by one unit? Okay, so what is it going to contribute to the response? We also want to look, we want to look at the hard. You know, this is odd, right? Hard is 
exponential, you know, we have two names for hot. In terms of pi, what is this? In terms of a model, it is this, exponential. You know, in terms of a model, that's what it call hot. Okay, now, if instead of using X, if I wanted to go up by one, okay, I'm not, I'm not where I see X, I want to plug in X plus one. Let's see what happened. We want to do mathematics now. We know what we're trying to do here. We basically want to, how can we interpret beta one when X, you know, and you know, the beta one, which is the slope is going to tell you for every unit increase, every unit increase in predator means when it, when it go up by one, if I have X and I replace it by X plus one in the hard model, what happened? Let's see. Oh, look at what I've done now. Instead of X, I'm putting X plus one. Let's see what is gonna happen now. Now, when, when, when I'm not gonna find the ratio of the two, the ratio of the new one and the old one. Let's see. Which one is the old one? The new one is at the top. You see, at the top, instead of X, what did I put? X plus one, right? The old one is this one. Now, when I find the ratio, mathematically speaking, what do you think we're going to have? We have exponential raised to power beta one. Now, the exponential raised to power beta one, it means exponentiation of beta one. The exponentiation of beta one is basically talking about hard. Okay, I just wanted to take a look at that, but I'm still gonna walk you through some example. Now, what I want to explain now is this. We've already fit the logistic regression model. How do we assess a logistic regression model? A model, every statistical model has assumption. A model is as good as assumption putting into a model. If you really want to tell how good is a model, how wrong is a model, then we need to revisit assumptions. Not only that, we can conduct an inference by investigating whether the predator that we use in the model is statistically significant or not. We can do confidence interval and something like that. I'm going to walk you through that now. Now, I want to use this example. The example that I'm working, that I want to use now. Okay. Um, the, I'm looking at the effect of GPA. You know, you can see GPA 10 because I'm talking about the GPA on the 10 scale. Okay, on the 10 scale. I'm looking at the effect on the probability of getting admission. You know, GPA play is an important factor, right? In getting admission, right? Into, into graduate school, right? Now, at the end of the day, when you use, when you use uh, software, the software is giving you, you know, anytime when you see coefficient, it means estimate. You have the standard error. And I told you, um, when you are trying to, uh, when, you, when you compute logistic regression, you're basically going to be, see Z value, not T value. You're going to see Z value, right? Now the question now is, I have a logistic regression model. How can I actually investigate whether beta one is statistically significantly different from zero? Because let me tell you this, when beta one is equal to zero, you know what it means? When beta one equal to zero, it means there's no connection between your response and the predator because the beta one is the slope. Now, under the non-hypothesis, when I'm testing that beta one equal to zero, alternative, beta one not equal to zero. Now, in regression analysis, in linear regression analysis, when you are trying to investigate the significance of parameter, of individual parameter in the regression model, you know, you use t-test, right? But in logistic regression, we don't use T test. We use Z test. Z, Z, look at that. That's how we use Z test. Well, let me tell you this. Whether you're using Z test or you're using T test, they got the same formula. What is the formula? It is the estimate divided by the standard error. Look at that. 
the estimate, like for instance here, this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if I want to get the Z here, 3.45, do you see 3.45, that's Z, what am I going to do to get that? It's going to be a 0 0.545417 divided by 0 0.157931. So, which is basically mean, if I want to get this guy here, 3.45, then it's going to be this divided by that. You can try that now. That is the formula here. Okay? And at the end of the day, when we get a p-value, look at the p-value here. It's 0 0.001. The p-value is less that, than 0 0.05. What is going to be your conclusion? Your conclusion is that you are rejecting the non-hypothesis. You know what we want? Before you can have a model, Okay, the non-hypothesis have to be rejected. Rejecting non-hypothesis tell us uh, there's a significant relationship. That's what it means. Okay, now, if I don't want to use p-value, you know, I told you the other time, another way to investigate whether uh, a re uh, regression slope is statistically significant, you can construct interval. And I remember I said something the other time, uh, when you construct an interval, if it is from negative to positive, if the interval include zero, what happened? No different. It means you cannot reject this. But when you have, when your interval is from negative to negative or positive to positive, then that's a significance. Now, uh, uh, you know, if you take a look at the interval now, we got 1.27 and 2.35. There is no zero in this interval. Now, the question now is, if we want to find the interval manually, what are we going to do? I'm going to show you the formula now. If you want to do that manually, this is the formula. The estimate, the beta one cap is the estimate plus or minus Z. When I'm doing 95%, if I'm doing 95% confidence interval, that Z is going to be 1.96. Okay, so what I'm trying to say now, if I, what I'm trying to say now, uh, I'm going to work something on the board uh, for you to see. Uh, give me one second. Now, what I want to say now, you know, what if I ask you to do to compute that manually? If you want to compute that manually, what are you going to do? You know, I said, uh, beta one cap plus or minus Z the standard error of beta one cap. Now, you know what I'm gonna do? What is the beta one cap, the one for GPA 10? Is 0 0.54, is 0 0.54, 5417 plus or minus, if I say 95%, my Z will be 1.96. So this is gonna be 1.96. What is the standard error for that? Is 0 0.157931. You know what you're gonna do? If you multiply this by this, you're going to do 0.545417 minus uh, whatever you get here. And you're going to do 0 0.545417 plus 1.96. It means you're going to get how many results? You're going to get two, two values, the lower one and the upper one. So you, if, you, if you try this, you, that is going to give you one point. Uh, I mean, you're going to have the interval the confidence, uh, you know, the interval that I actually talk about, okay? Now, so that is what we have here. You see that now, right? So that is what we have. We want to find the confidence interval. And what am I showing you here? You know, uh, when I'm testing that beta one equal to zero, I mean, beta one not equal to zero, then I'm trying to say the logistic regression model exists. Look at that. When I'm testing that this is not zero, then it means the log hold exists. But when I'm testing that it is zero, if you plug in zero here, you're only going to have what? Beta naught. When you have beta naught, it's like no relationship at all. That's a constant function, no relationship. So that is what we're testing. Okay, so I just wanted to take note uh, of that. Okay, now, uh, Another thing I'm going to mention uh, in assessing logistic regression model, uh, we use uh, deviance. We use uh, the different in the likelihood function. But I wish I'm basically, 
uh, going to show you now. Now you can see here, you can see G equal 18.952 degree of freedom one. We normally pay more attention to the deviance. Okay, you know, with the deviance, you basically going to assess whether the model is fantastic or not. And how do we get the deviance? You know, the deviance that you have is just uh, trying to you know, look at the difference between the residual deviance and the null deviance. We're going to have the residual deviance, we're going to, but you don't care about that. You just care about the deviance and you, you care about the p-value associated with that. Now, what is the p-value saying? It's 0 0.00. You know, the p-value that you have here is talking about the generality. You know, you remember in linear regression, right? When you want to try to investigate the significance of individual parameter, you, you use a t-test, right? You, if you want, what if you want to talk about the significance of overall parameter, you use f-test. We also have it in logistic regression. In logistic regression, you know, the p-value here, the p-value that you see here is for individual. But the p-value you see here is for the entire model. So this is very, very important. This guy and the one here. The one that corresponds to the predictor and the general one. They are very, very important for model to be significant. The p-value has to be smaller than the level of significance. Okay. The last of topic today, analysis of categorical variables. Why do we say categorical variables? What if in a situation where your response is categorical, your predictor is also categorical. I'm going to say this again. You know, in for you to use linear regression, right? Your response has to be continuous. Your predictor variable could be any, right? For you to use analysis of variance, your response has to be continuous. Your predictor has to be categorical. You know that, right? Even though we have situation where we can also, in addition to, uh, in analysis of variance, in addition to the categorical predator, we can also have quantitative predator, and we call that analysis of covariance. Now, when we start the logistic regression, in logistic regression, the response variable is categorical, okay? Then the predictor has to be quantitative, but situation whereby the two of them are, 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 you know, are categorical. Then we call them analysis of categorical variables. I'm going to say this again. Now, what we want to discuss now, the response is categorical. Predictor is also categorical. And that is why we call it analysis of categorical variable. And I'm going to give you an example now. Take a look at this example now. It will always come in, in terms of a cross tabulation like this. Do you know what I'm trying to do here? Uh, uh, people are complaining about migraines, maybe excessive or uh, uh, headache, right? And we are the treatment, you know, the drug that we basically want to use is called TMS, okay? And the placebo is like control. You are not giving anything. Now you know what happened? 100 participants was given uh, TMS. And out of 100 that was given TMS, 39 out of 100 have a pain free. You know, the essence of the drug is basically to relieve pain, right? Because they have headache, right? You now want to compare the treatment with nothing. Now, I want to tell you what is categorical here. The TMS and placebo, okay? That's a categorical predictor because it has two levels, right? TMS, placebo. What is the response? The response is, is either you have a pain-free or no. So it's also categorical. This is an example of two by two. Two levels in each. Two levels of response. Two levels of, you know, of, of predator. This is what we mean by analysis of categorical variable. Now the question now is, how do we analyze, uh, you know, this? Because we basically want to see whether the TMS is working. You know, in clinical trial, if you really want to test the effect of a, of a drug, you need to compare that treatment with nothing. 
does it perform better than nothing? If it performs better than nothing, then they will go on in the next phase of the trial. Now, what we want to do now, 100 people was given placebo. Another 100 people that have headache was given TMS. Out of 100 that was given TMS, 39 of them have, you know, a pain-free. And out of 100 people that was given placebo, 22 of them have pain-free. Let me tell you this. It is not all, uh, you know, uh, illness that you need medicine. I remember then when I was in Africa, when I, when I have headache, you know what I used to tell myself? I will try not to think. Like maybe there's something I'm thinking about. I will, I will, then if I start doing what I like, if I start doing what I like, before you know, my headache is going to go away. Or maybe somebody is passing by and is, is making a joke. I will be happy again and the headache will go. That is the reason why out of the 100 people that was giving placebo, even 22 of them, you know, they have it pain free. They, 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 they didn't give them anything. Okay, now how do we analyze this? How do we know whether the TMS, whether the treatment perform better than the placebo? How do, okay, now this is what we're gonna do. What is a PI TMS? What is the proportion of patients who get relief after using the TMS? It is 39 divided by 100. You can see that, right? 39 out of 100. That would be 0 0.39. The next thing, we need to get the odd for the TMS. The odd for the TMS, what do we mean by odd? The ratio of the number of patients who gets relief to the number of patients who did not get relief using the TMS. What is going to be that? That would be 39 divided by 61. This is the heart for TNS. You see that? 39 divided by 61. Then after that, I'm also going to get the one for placebo. Okay? The one for placebo will basically to be 22 divided by 78. Okay? 22 divided by 78. That is it, the heart for that. Now, if you see what I'm doing here, it's just like if I know hard to be this, I can calculate the probability associated with that. What does it give me? It's 0 0.39, which is confirming this guy here. You see that? Okay. Now, how many hearts do I get? How many hearts? You know, this is the probability of those who get cured with placebo. You know, uh, that would be 22 divided by 100, right? This is the heart for placebo. What do you mean by hard? For placebo, the hard for placebo is going to be how many people get relieved divided by the number of people that did not get relieved. That is that, you see now? Now I get, now what have I done here? You can see the reason why I was showing you how to get the odd from probability the other time. I got the probability and I also get the hard, hard for each. What am I gonna do with that? Okay, I'm now gonna do hard ratio. What is going to be my heart ratio now? What am I interested in? In the TMS, right? The one I'm interested in, I'm going to put it at the top. The one I'm not interested in, I'm going to put it at the bottom. Now, what am I going to do now? What I'm going to do now is going to be this guy divided by this guy. The heart of the TMS divided by the heart of the placebo, that will give me 2.27. What is the meaning of 2.27? What is the meaning? That means the horse are 2.27 times higher of getting relief using TMS than placebo. That is the conclusion. It means you are more patient, are more likely to get relief from their headache using, using TMS than doing nothing. That's what we mean. That's what they tell me. If the horse is one, one to one, what is the interpretation? If I go one here, if it is one, what is the meaning? Can somebody tell me? Okay. Good job, which means they are equally effective. That is the meaning. That is the meaning. But situation where the heart ratio is less than one, then the intervention is worse.
It is not all the time that the intervention works. There's possibility intervention could even compound the wolves. Okay, you know what I've done now? I just show you how to do that manually. This is how to do it manually. How do we do it using, the, using hard software? Easy. You're going to see now, what is this? 39, 22, 61, 78. Take a look at how I'm going to do it now. I'm going to create my data table equal to how to bind. I'm going to write 39, comma 22, 61, comma 78. Now, let me show you where did I get that. You go back to the table. Do you see the table? Okay, the one for yes, you know, the response. I'm using the response. Yes, 39 and 22. No, 61 and 78. Look at that. Do you see here? Then I create a table. Then I'm going to run a chi-square. What is, what is the meaning of a chi-square? The chi-square test is testing, is there any relationship between the two categorical variables? If I use CMS, if, if I get relief when I have a date, is it because I've used CMS? Okay. Now look at the p-value. What do you see here? The p-value is less than 0 0.05. What does that mean? The treatment is working. That is the meaning. And we, we saw that in the hard ratio the other time that it is two point something times effective than the other one. Look at that. And this is when you use the logistic, we can use logistic regression too. This is using the chi-square. This is using the logistic. You just write yes, comma, no. What is yes, comma, no? That is the response, right? Then group, okay? Then family equal to binomial, then I got my results. But I'm gonna surprise you now. If you look at here, can you do this? You know, this is a log hold, right? Is 0 0.8184 is a log hold, right? If I want to get the hold, what am I going to do? Exponentiate. When I do the exponential response, that it give me that. What did I get before? 2.27. Let's go back. When we do it manually. Oh. That's what we got before. Look at that. We got 2.27 before. That 2.27 that we call hard ratio, when you use logistic regression, you're just going to do exponential raised to power, the, the beta one. Look at that. Exponential raised to power, that will give you that, which is the odd ratio. You see that? That is the odd ratio. OK. Oh, I don't have time. I wanted to solve this, but let me just explain this to you. This is in exercise in the textbook. We are, they've given you this, they gave you that, but you know their question? Use the model to estimate the odd. If you want to get the odd, when the tumor size is six, you're going to plug in six on the size. What do you want to find? Hard, right? This log, we come back here and be exponential of them. You don't? But I'm going to continue on Friday because of my time. Okay, I'm going to continue on Friday because of my time. Uh, is there anyone who need clarification uh, before I go today? Like I said, is there anyone who gets stuck? You know, when you send a message to me, because it's not all the time, university, uh, uh, you know, message system, at time message could get suspended. When you send a message to me and you don't see my reply within one day, give me a call. 763-501-6180. What I want to hear from you. You know, you see you have chance, right? The exam, the final exam has a lot of weight. If you score so high in the final exam, of course you're going to get A. Okay? So please, I want to hear from you. Make sure you stay safe and have a very beautiful day. Uh, this of your line, is there anyone want to ask question or only clarification? Thank you. You're welcome.